As we've done this series on the end times, we've sought to unpack a lot of the myths and de-entangle the sort of uh, hype from what the Bible has to say and try to understand biblically how to look at Revelation and understand something of what it means for Jesus to be the coming king, the second coming of Jesus returning for his bride. We've looked at the signs that would happen. We've looked at that sense of the apocalypse, the ending of the world, the rolling up of the heavens and the earth. We've looked at the tribulation and how Daniel prophesied about this being seven years and how we saw 69 sevens had been fulfilled and then with one seven left for tribulation, but that tribulation will be split into two, into two halves. We've seen that uh, Revelation presents an antichrist rising up and whether you interpret Revelation 6 or um, Revelation 12 and 13 as talking about uh, the antichrist, we see that there is uh, one who rises up in severe opposition to God. We've seen that there is a rapture of believers where Jesus comes on the cloud to um, take his, his church, his believers, his elect, his loved ones, his people back to be with him. And we've seen as well that there are, 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 there's just as three views for the rapture. We see that there's also this sense of a millennial kingdom where, again, there's three different views. In our last session, we looked at uh, one of the other things that might come out through the end times and one of the phrases you might have heard of this um, Armageddon. And we saw that Armageddon is the hill of Megiddo, that uh, real place where the nations gather at the end of time for the final battle against Jesus. But there's another thing which often comes up and some uh, another thing which you might have questions about, but it's good for us just to maybe pause and just try to answer. Over the years, have you heard people talk about something called the Mark of the Beast? That sometimes talked about as, you know, 666, the number of the beast. And it's been a subject of many films. You know, it's uh, Iron Maiden at, it, at their best. You know, and you hear all sorts of people talking. With the current COVID pandemic, I've heard people talking about um, refusing uh, vaccines because they might contain microchips and that sense of the government big brother watching you, that sense of actually maybe fulfilling this sense of what Revelation says about um, the mark of the beast and some resistance to some of those things. And when we look at all of these, how do we disentangle the hype and the fear from what the Bible has to say? I think it's good to realise that actually the Bible talks about the mark of the beast in four locations within Revelation. And we're going to look at those four now. To begin with, the first thing that I want us to realise is that the devil is the father of lies. And therefore, he loves to counterfeit things. And I would draw your attention to uh, Revelation 7 and verse 3. Early on in the tribulation, we see um, right at the, the beginning, there's 144,000 um, Jewish people set aside as witnesses of God through the tribulation. And Revelation 7 verse 3 refers to these 144,000 believers being marked with a seal. Now, a seal is, you know, I often think of like one of those wax seals that you get. And when it's stamped, it actually seals ownership. It's often used in a title deed. And when these 144,000 believers in Jesus are sealed, they're sealed with a mark on their foreheads. When we come to um, Revelation 13 and verse 16... Um, what we see is that the, there is a mark being placed on people, again, on their forehands or on their uh, right hands. And again, it's this image of ownership rights. The, and, but again, isn't it interesting that just as Jesus had sealed people um, as being his, we see the enemy counterfeiting that with another seal marking who are his. The second thing that I want us to notice is that in Revelation 13, there's a second beast that comes out of the earth. We looked previously at the Antichrist and the possibility that that might be the beast who comes out of the sea. But after the beast who comes out of the sea, there's another beast that comes up out of the earth. And in Revelation, this uh, second beast is often looked at as being a false prophet. 
And if you remember, um, the uh, Bible says that before Jesus comes back, Elijah will return. And in Revelation 11, it's interesting that we have two witnesses, one of whom looks a lot like Elijah in the things that he does. Again, if we have this Satan sort of counterfeiting things, just as we get, um, you know, the, 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 the sealing of, of his followers, we also see that this, when this false prophet comes up, he seeks to um, get people to worship the beast. And he requires um, the people who are, are there within the tribulation to worship falsely. And the purpose of the mark is to identify, in effect, the beast church. We see, uh, you know, in Revelation 7 that um, God has marked his believers with a seal. And we see now that um, Satan and his, and his minions are also um, wanting to seal people to identify them as their church. And when Revelation talks about 666 as the mark of the beast... I think we have to understand, it's difficult for us maybe in the West, but um, numbers have symbolism. And in the Bible, for example, the number seven symbolises perfection. So creation was made in seven days. You know, there's a symbol of perfection. And six is the number of man. So whilst we can speculate that this might be a code, it might equally just be a reminder that the mark is 666. In other words, it's the mark of man. It's not the mark of God. 